Welcome back to the American Freedom Law Center's Faith and Freedom Report, where we keep you up to date on those important issues affecting your faith and freedom across our great nation. Today I want to comment on the recent Supreme Court ruling in United States v. Windsor, in which a 5-4 to four majority of the court struck down a provision of the Federal Defense of Marriage Act, which was passed by large majorities in both houses and signed into law by President Clinton in 1996. While the court did not go all the way and establish a constitutional right to so-called same-sex marriage, it certainly brought us much closer to that point. As Justice Scalia noted in his dissent, while the majority claimed to have confined its ruling to only those marriages recognized by the states as valid, and that it was not giving formal recognition to same-sex marriage as a matter of federal constitutional law, this assurance was preceded by a lecture on how superior the majority's moral judgment in favor of same-sex marriage was to Congress's hateful moral judgment against it. As Justice Scalia rightfully concluded, quote, the only thing that will confine the court's holding is its sense of what it can get away with, end quote. But regardless of the court's ultimate decision on this issue, one thing is clear. The court cannot, by judicial fiat, change transcendent truths. Christian teaching on marriage and on the complementarity of the sexes reiterates a truth that is evident to right reason and recognized as such by all the major cultures of the world. Marriage is not just any relationship between human beings. It was established by the Creator with its own nature, essential properties, and purpose. No ideology can erase from the human spirit the certainty that marriage exists solely between a man and a woman who cooperate with God in the procreation and upbringing of new human lives. The common good requires that laws recognize, promote, and protect marriage as the basis of the family, the primary unit of society. Legal recognition of homosexual unions or placing them on the same level as marriage would mean not only the approval of deviant behavior, with the consequence of making it a model in present-day society, but also obscure basic values which belong to the common inheritance of humanity. People of faith cannot fail to defend these values for the good of men and women and for the good of society itself. In the final analysis, when it comes to pronouncing moral truths, the Supreme Court has no authority to change God's plan for marriage. And for the good of society, let us pray that it does not do so. I'm Robert Muse, co-founder and senior counsel for the American Freedom Law Center, bringing you this Faith and Freedom Report. You can learn more about the American Freedom Law Center and its fight for your faith and freedom at www.americanfreedomlawcenter.org.